Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jeremy Clarkson, I'm the shittest host they've ever had. <laughs> I don't think they should put the words on the order queue for you. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got news for you? I'm Jeremy Clarkson. In the news this week, southeastern trains stage a publicity exercise to prove their new trains are idiot proof. <laughs> <laughs> In North Korea, state television refutes allegations of famine and announces record figures for the production of candy floss. And as they rehearse for the Olympic opening ceremony, London's top dance troupe regrets agreeing to find a place for Sebco's Auntie Jean. On Ian's team tonight is an Italian property lawyer and socialite who says, I'm out nearly every night, I'm invited everywhere and I can't say no. Which kind of explains why she's here tonight. Please welcome <laughs> Nancy <laughs> Delolio. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a stand-up comedian from Glasgow, where just being able to stand up is seen as a talent. <laughs> Please welcome Kevin Bridges. <laughs> and we start. We start with the biggest stories of the week. Ian and Nancy, how they look at this. Uh, that's a Tory MP. Mm -hmm. You can yes. tell they're all like that. <laughs> that's a Labour MP. Yeah. That's Tom Watson. Oh, Murdoch's been arrested. Mm. He's right. in the slammer. <laughs> bye yet. bye. And they can't bear to look. Because it's so they can't sad. Bear to look. Yes, they are very sad. So that's it. Big news. Murdoch's inside. And he's. <laughs> <laughs> that was strictly no. true. No, it no. isn't, is it? No. I was suddenly in the world of fantasy. <laughs> um, there's been a select committee, and they delivered their report. And they said that Murdoch was willfully blind. And they said his son was willfully ignorant about the phone hacking and what was going on in News International. So it was a really bad day for the Murdochs. Yeah, um, I think there are some important the questions to be, uh, to be answered by all of Rupert Murdoch's employees. I think there are. Yeah, so here we go. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about it, Jeremy? <laughs> well, I think as a Sun journalist, it's just a lot of <laughs> stuff and nonsense and a storm in a teacup. So there we are, moving on, Paul. <laughs> I thought you were talking to me there when you said, what do you think, Jeremy? I thought you just forgot my name. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only Sun journalist. Nancy writes for The Sun. On a Sunday, my column for about fashion. Now, I can't believe myself when I accept it. You shocked yourself, did you? Actually, well, I, well there's a, I shocked myself more, many times. Um, <laughs> uh, say yes, but every day, but even a shock was there when I walked in, in the mirror in the morning. Uh, I can't surprise everyone getting beautiful and beautiful every day. So, um... Well, yes. any English that... guests on this? <laughs> now, now, don't start. Do you need an interpreter? Yeah. OK, I'll translate. Nancy right. was really ashamed of herself for taking uh, money from Murdoch. Yeah. <laughs> is that, is that say, not uh, yeah. Yeah, There's a shortage of court interpreters in this country. <laughs> I think I might apply. Why, why do you think you speak the perfect English? Uh, do, do, do I think I speak yeah. perfect English? <laughs> I, these things are, are relative. Um, <laughs> I don't speak five languages, I'm like you, so, um, Thank no. you. Yeah. I'm just trying to be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Stop <laughs> flirting! <laughs> Stop it. You did actually once say, didn't you, that any man who doesn't flirt with you, you must be gay? Yes, I said. Ian, you're past. <laughs> Can I just see how I'm out? Oh, God almighty. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you've ruined go the moment, Jerry. I was just going to say, Kevin. I'm a big yes. fan of your fashion column, Nancy. <laughs> I was well, a big fan of your column. <laughs> <laughs> well to be honest, I'm very confused by the Leveson inquiry. Are you? Mm. There was a good bit about whether at a party at Rebecca Brooks's house there was a conversation between um, James Murdoch and the Prime Minister about the Beast Guy B takeover. But luckily, a Sun columnist called Clarkson mm -hmm. <laughs> went into print to say nothing ever happened. They didn't talk about it. Then, would you believe it, the well, Prime Minister said, yes, we did. Yeah. So well, someone well. isn't telling the truth. <laughs> no, that evening, I remember it extremely well. well you see, that makes you unlike the Murdochs, who remember nothing. <laughs> I spent the entire evening talking to James Murdoch about the environment, which he loves and which I hate. I don't know how he managed to have what he called a tiny chat about the takeover of B-Sky B, because he was arguing with me constantly till 2am. Do you think he and Cameron ran away to the toilet to do it? <laughs> <laughs> you do know what you just said. <laughs> you didn't follow them in there, did you? <laughs> Tom Watson made a big, powerful speech, OK? Yeah. And then he cocked it up by quoting Bob Dylan. Mm. What did he say? The ladder of the law has no top or bottom, something like that. Exactly right. No, that's bang on. No top and no bottom. Tom Watson, he says his wife left him because of the phone hacking. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, well, everyone's yeah, got an excuse yeah. for it, haven't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think she left him because... You see many other reasons why the, the wife left him. <laughs> He's a necklace <laughs> adenoidal <laughs> brummy. It was a pitiful waste of blood and organs. Um, I suppose briefly in his favour, when his wife left him, he didn't slap a super injunction on her. Oh, no. hey! I've got your top tip It wasn't a super injunction, just to be specific. Right. But it is a top tip I've got for everybody, really, if you're watching. <laughs> An injunction is a very expensive way mm -hmm. of making sure a very boring story reaches the maximum number <laughs> of people. <laughs> and the other thing, the only good thing that came out of it was the Telegraph said I'd been having an affair with Jemima Khan. And then Jemima went and tweeted, going, this is disgusting and it's revolting and I've never heard anything. So I was going, oh, steady on, love, a simple delay. <laughs> wouldn't, be, wouldn't be good enough. The committee was split down the middle. Yeah. It was. OK. Only uh, on one sentence, though, Jeremy, not yes. on the fact that Murdoch's generally a great bloke. Um, he's a great bloke. There was one sentence which they didn't agree on, which is whether he's unfit to run a public company, which is absolutely obvious he is. Um, definitely is, definitely is. But they're politicians, so they have to disagree about something. Alex Salmond is the only world leader who's still got a close relationship with, with Murdoch. I think, there we go. Just thought I'd chuck that in. <laughs> I think it's Alex Salmond just trying to get his sky upgraded so he gets the movie channel. So, <laughs> so he can sit and watch Braveheart three times a day. <laughs> He's trying to get the... <laughs> he's trying to get the Scottish son to support independence. That's why Salmon's pretty tight, as the kids are saying, Jeremy. Pretty tight with Murdoch. As the Kurds are saying. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a theory for a long time. Can, Gla can Glaswegians say burglar alarm? Oh, here we go. This is living back in primary five here. Yeah. Can you, though? Can I say what? Burglar alarm. Yes. Can you? <laughs> Right. Burglar alarm. <laughs> can you say it? I can say it. <laughs> can you say I, it in Glaswegian? I can do them accent. all. Curly whirly, there's been a murder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cheer everybody up. Yeah. Would anybody like to see again the, uh, the footage of Neville Thurbeck? Yes. The incredible staring man from the news of the world. You would? <laughs> Here we go. Well, well, joining us now, Neville Thurlbeck, the former news editor and chief reporter at the News of the World, who is now the film manager for Talking to Minds, a PTSD charity. Uh, Neville Thurlbeck was arrested over allegations of his involvement in film hacking and is bailed until next month. <laughs> <laughs> it looks as if he's getting his passport photographed on. <laughs> what did Neville have to say about Rupert Murdoch? So I tell you. Yes. Yeah, please. He said, from the position I am in, I feel like kicking Rupert Murdoch in the Thames <laughs> for not giving me a payoff. <laughs> Where is a man's Thames? Between Chiswick and Putney Bridge, I think. 
<laughs> what other media magnet, OK, is facing an inquiry into his behaviour? Of course, Berlusconi. Yeah. Is so, it true is you, you stood as an MP? MP yes. For Mr Berlusconi's for Mr. party? Well, for Mr Berlusconi's party, because yeah, it was good. a little bit different. Yeah, it's very well, different. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I brought it up. Was the selection process very rigorous? Um, I mean, I'm not saying he was personally I mean, involved. He was absolutely not personally involved. No, no. That would be quite it different. It is like sitting on a date, this, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> I'm not a host, I'm just a gooseberry. <laughs> can Jeremy, I just, okay. Nancy, uh, can I just ask? Yes, you said you. the Italians will miss Silvio Berlusconi, and you went on to describe the former Italian PM uh, as being charming and like John F. Kennedy. No, I think I used John Kennedy more close to Tony Blair. You actually said that, but then you well, said JFK's yes. wife was bright and beautiful while Tony's... <laughs> Finish that uh, sentence then. What, is, what were you meaning? Well, there was a little difference between Jacqueline Kennedy and Jerry Blair. That's what I said. What is the difference? Well, different colour, different way to dress, a different She's style. She's not black, is she? <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, according to the Daily Mail, the Berlusconi trial will feature hundreds of witnesses, including yeah. George Clooney and Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think so. Leveson should use the same guest booker, cos he's only had <laughs> Anne Diamond and Ian Hislop. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone see that Australian politician um, being interviewed about some political sex scandal? Yes. Have you seen was, that? It was very good. Watch oh. this. Can I ask you, do you think he should return to the Speaker's chair uh, while these civil claims are still being played out? I understand that the Prime Minister has addressed this in a press conference in Turkey in the last few hours. I haven't seen what she said, but let me say I support what it is that she said. <laughs> you haven't seen what she said, but I support what my Prime Minister said, so... Well, what's your view? Well, my view is what the Prime Minister's view is. Surely you must have your own view on this, Bill Shorten. No, when you ask if I got my view on this, that's such a general question, it invites me to go to lots well, of places. Well, it's a specific question as to well, whether be... Peter Slipper should return as Speaker of your Parliament while he's facing civil claims of sexual harassment. These matters have yet to be established, and I support what our Prime Minister has said. But you don't know what that is? Oh, I'm sure she's right. <laughs> Australia's Nick Clegg there. <laughs> this is the Select Committee's utterly partisan report into News International's dealings. Not that I'm taking sides. Um, committee Chairman Tom Watson accused News International of an extensive cover-up of rampant law-breaking. But for me, the big issue was Murdoch's decision to turn up to the Leveson inquiry in a Range Rover TD V8 Vogue SE, <laughs> which is an excellent choice and demonstrates great wisdom. <laughs> um, the committee found that Rupert Murdoch had exhibited willful blindness to what's going on, mm. something Wendy Deng has to do every time his little blue pills kick in. <laughs> well, that's the end of your column. <laughs> As the wife often says to Rupert on a Friday night. The stupid thing is, it is the end of my column, but anyway. <laughs> well, we can. Uh, have a look at this. Ah, oh, yes, this is the uh, oh. 1946 haircut right in front of there. Uh, that's the Heath Road. People have been coming back from holiday and queuing up. This is the people who their yeah, flats have been turned into a place where you can shoot ground to air missiles. <laughs> it's fantastic. For the Olympic <laughs> Games, of course. <laughs> that's not going to make a mess of anybody's ceiling, is it? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the idea that we were thought we were signing up for the Olympic Games, but we're signing up to live in North Korea instead. <laughs> So uh, people have got rockets coming out of their roofs, they're going to have to have their uh, letterboxes propped open by specially reinforced matchsticks and Bren machine guns pointing out of the letterbox in case terrorists come and try and deliver your mail dressed as postman. <laughs> you could be cheating here, somebody throws a discus and a javelin in front of a country, you just shoot them down. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be so obvious on the night when it happens. We can't just keep explaining it away as an incident. <laughs> you thought it through. You're well, right, of course. This is the news that uh, people would rather risk a yeah. terrorist attack than have to queue for an hour uh, or have a missile on their water tower. Um, so how did the head of the UK Border Force, uh, Brian Moore, reassure people planning to come here for the Olympics? 
He's bringing border staff out of retirement, is that right? Paul Skulls is coming back. Have <laughs> <laughs> you never left? Who retires from a job at Passport Control? It's the least physically and mentally taxing job I can think of. You just need to look at a face, look at a photograph of the face, make sure it's the same face, and then wave them in. <laughs> I don't mind queuing at Border Control. I, I watch a lot of programmes, like, you know, Banged Up Abroad and Border Cops and stuff. I like to put bets on who's going to get took into the background. <laughs> Well, that stoned-looking guy with ginger dreadlocks and tattoos, he's... that's him. He's... he's not leaving this airport till he's had a fist in his ass and an ulcer in his face. What he actually said was, asked what he thought about the possibility of four-hour queues during the Olympics, he said, so be it. <laughs> One passenger from Seattle believed this old business was all part of a cunning plan. Any idea what that was? The idea of the UK government having a cunning plan. <laughs> <laughs> to stop people coming to visit the country. Well, he told reporters at this rate, only British athletes will win gold because no one else will be able to make it over. <laughs> Which is clearly ridiculous because we'll still be fourth. <laughs> There's a self scan thing as well. You can walk up and scan your passport on yourself. It's always good watching somebody in the queue going for it. It's always an American who's got a bit of enthusiasm. Hey man, we can do it ourselves. <laughs> You're just in the queue going, nah, that'll be broke. No chance. <laughs> He, he scans it a few times, then they try and go back to their place in the queue, going, oh, well, smart ass, get to the back. <laughs> and what's the latest technology for IDing people that the Home Office has spent, I think it's nine million quid on? It's the Irish thing, isn't it? Oh, You're absolutely right. Absolutely you know what Irish terrible. stands for? Identification okay. Regional <laughs> Inspector <laughs> Soldier. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work at all. That no, doesn't work in machine, absolutely not. This created chaos. Can you just say the word chaos again? Chaos. Lovely. <laughs> I thought you said there were cows at the airport. Cows <laughs> is the same. Yeah. No, no, cows are much better. Self-service cows. Self cows. cows. If you want a glass of milk in the queue, you just walk. <laughs> Iris stands for Iris Recognition Immigration, yeah, immigration System. system yeah. It doesn't really, does it? They just made it up. The worst <laughs> thing about Iris, because I have that eye thing, well, is it, it does work brilliantly, because even if you've been on a very long flight and your eyes are all bloodshot and you're a bit pissed, mm. <laughs> Wheel about and he goes, please move a bit to your left, a bit to your right, and what have you. You, you do go through incredibly fast, I mean, in just minutes. But you, do, you don't go through normal channels, do you? Oh, uh, no. Special service Peter show is always going to pick me up from the plane, so I go smoothly through. Special so, service Peter Special Airways. service Peter show is one of the incredible things this, this, country, this country does. I does. know, we, we all have it all the time. <laughs> We're so glad it's on offer. <laughs> this special service that takes Actually, you through. Actually, they should increase the number of the people who work at special service because it's an incredible service done by the British, uh, British <laughs> race. It, if everybody did it, it would rather lose its point. How successful do you well, think the Iris technology has been? I, I think, think it's it. been 27% successful. <laughs> exactly. I'm afraid, Paul, you're... You are 27% out. Oh, am I? Machine actually told me I showed willful blindness. He is 27% out. If we have a look at the, uh, the website, OK, registration for Iris is no longer available. All our oh. enrolment rooms at Heathrow, Gatwick, Birmingham and Manchester airports are closed until further notice. <laughs> so everyone back in the queue. In other security news, what did the residents of a block of flats in East London discover on their roofs? <laughs> They're going to have ground to air missiles for the <laughs> Olympic Games. <laughs> You're going to sit there, um, gripped by the Olympics and also gripped by every time a plane goes overhead, <laughs> wondering whether that's going to be their last moment. <laughs> so, yes, people had no idea that they were, you know, you could just come in and put missiles on your roof of where you lived and they're absolutely up in arms, no pun intended. <laughs> You're right. According to the sun, the rockets will be According used to... According to the sun? Mm -hmm. the, the rockets will have big breasts and go, oh, hello, how are you doing? <laughs> You'll have to stop quoting this newspaper as a paper of record, Jeremy. Uh. You'll have to stop inviting the columnists on the show. That's me. <laughs> Two of us this way. He's got anything to do with me. Yes. I'd have sooty. <laughs> According to the Sun, the rockets will be used to blast any hijacked plane out of the sky and all over Tower Hamlets. Yeah. <laughs> they could do thirteen pounds worth of damage. <laughs> I couldn't quite work out why every time I saw a report about things, it was just showing you the block of flats where they're going to be. Yeah. yeah. So that if you were the, the other side, you'd think, ah, they've got rockets, but they're there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's difficult to disguise, disguise them, really, isn't it? Even if you put them in like, overnight, I suppose you could put them into giant milk bottles and pretend it's November the 5th. <laughs> 
Another planned location yeah. is um, near a protected woodland in south-east London, OK? Eltham and Plumstead MP Clive Efford said he would take the matter up with the Defence Secretary, angrily declaring, this is a protected area boasting rare plants such as the corky-fruited water droplet. <laughs> That's the argument I used, actually, um, to keep ramblers oh. off my land. <laughs> it didn't work. We've got a clip, actually, of somebody took a YouTube thing mm. of some Ministry of Defence man who came to install the launch pads. Have you ah. saw it was overseer? Have you seen this? Are you from the MOD? Yes, I am. Look, we've got... Can, can you explain who authorised you to turn a civilian premises into a military base? Can you explain under, under what legal precedent you have to do that? Whoa. <laughs> The man who made that footage has been evicted. <laughs> well, why has he been evicted? Well, because he's a twat. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jeremy, if we started judging people on the fact that they were twats, some of us would get no work at all, <laughs> wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is the story that millions of air passengers face a summer of chaos at Heathrow. This story at least explains why you're not allowed to smile on your passport photo, so they can recognise you after four hours queuing at Terminal <laughs> 5. <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, passengers have faced delays of up to two and a half hours. I don't know who's to blame, but whoever it is should be taken outside and shot in front of their families. <laughs> And that's round two, which is the strengthometer of news. OK, fingers on your buzzers, because I here comes okay. the first one. Oh, this is the uh, New England manager. Um, everybody expected it to be Harry Redknapp, but it wasn't. Uh, it was Roy Hodgson. Apparently, on one of the front pages of one of the uh, national newspapers, they sort of made fun of his... They said he's got a speech impediment. I hadn't ever noticed it before. I've heard him being interviewed. I think it's fairly slight. I think he pronounces his R's as W's, etc. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is very British. I no idea which hang, hang on. No, we're, no, no, we're, no. We're, <laughs> we're on Nancy's special yes. subject here. <laughs> <laughs> This was quite ridiculous, this, this fact that you already, but this is very British. You have to complain, especially in British, in a national English coach. They're going to start, it's going to start to blame everything. It's gonna this is the news that, while well, everyone else led with the Murdoch story, the Sun's front page was, bring on the Euros, we'll see you in Ukraine against France. <laughs> Better than our proprietor is a cook. <laughs> The Daily Mirror said Roy Hodgson looked like an owl, OK? Here's an owl, and here's Roy Hodgson. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I know about him is that he's a cultured man in he's a world well. that, apparently, Nancy, mm -hmm. a lot of the former England managers were not very cultured. <laughs> but you see, in general, I think both of them are very dull. The only difference is that Sven was likely to have me on his side. So Sven, <laughs> Sven was better because he had you? Well... It's very easy to, to say that. To say yes. that. No, yeah. not for the rest of us. <laughs> Are you lucky to tonight? Yes. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm well aware of that. According to the mirror, your man Roy is an intellectual. He can speak eight languages, which makes him England's cleverest ever manager. Mm -hmm. Paul Sven. But intelligence is not really quite about exactly. how many languages you speak. Exactly. Anyway. How many but languages do you speak, Nancy? Five. Which ones? Uh, try to speak Italian, try to speak English, Spanish, Portuguese. They're all the same. It, it, it's all the same. <laughs> Are you Rosetta Stone, Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> Are you the face behind that voice? How's the body language world reacted to Roy's appointment? Is there a body language <laughs> <laughs> Well, apparently there's even an expert called Judy James who told the Daily Star, I've never seen a less likely-looking leader in terms of body language. Wow. She's obviously never seen Gordon Brown, yeah, no. has she? <laughs> this is the appointment of Roy Hodgson as England manager. According to the Mirror, Roy speaks Norwegian, Italian, Swedish, Finnish, German, Danish and French, mm. which will be handy at the Euros as he'll be able to congratulate <laughs> all the managers he beat. <laughs> Over the years, England managers have experienced a lot of ups and downs. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy, I should have rephrased that. <laughs> Fingers on your buzzers, time for the next one. OK, ready? <coughs> ah, what's this all about? Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> 
you not know this either? Yeah. OK, good. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a before and after picture of a guy that lost no weight? <laughs> no. It's two candidates, local candidates for councillor, mayor. Oh, they've both got the same name. Tom, you know Tom, Tom Rowley, Tom Rowley. Tom, Tom, You're Tom, like... very nearly right. This is the Conservatives in Sandwell tried to unseat a Labour councillor called Derek Rowley by Ooh. fielding a look-alike called Derek Rowley. <laughs> and and do we know the result yet? I think okay. we find that Mr Rowley did win. <laughs> How has the Tory Derek Rowley defended himself um, from these accusations? Has he got wildly drunk and started lashing out with a machete? <laughs> well, he hasn't. <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, when asked about his candidacy, the Conservative Derek Rowley remained tight-lipped. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's move away from the Rowleys. Yeah. What well, did David Cameron say he wanted to give the country? Um, Boris. No, he, he's desperate for Boris to win as mayor. He doesn't just want him to be mayor of London. He wants him to be mayor he... of the moon. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, talking about elected mayors, he said, I'm giving the country a chance to have many more <laughs> Borises. I want a Boris in Birmingham, I want a <laughs> Boris in Leeds, I want a Boris in Bradford. They don't all have to be members of the Johnson family. <laughs> Although Boris has been making every effort to make sure they are. <laughs> Who here would like to see Boris answering a question fully and frankly? So here we go. Why is your party struggling nationally, do you think? Who's got a cup of coffee? <laughs> ben? Why, why are they struggling? Got that coffee. Why are they struggling? <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> Just give me ten seconds. <laughs> the Mail had a good picture this week. They said that Boris looked like an alpaca. Of this, I must ask one question. Are Boris's activities restricted to the human species? <laughs> <laughs> this is Derek Rowley, not to be confused with Derek Rowley. One local voter, Ethel Hardy, age 70, told the Mirror, it's easy for us old people to get flustered. Two people with the same name will be confusing. <laughs> Adding, it's easy for us old people to get flustered. <laughs> Two people with the same name will be confusing. That's how Ed Miliband got the job. <laughs> Fingers on the buzzers again. Here's the next one. It's been sold yesterday, world record, 108 millions. Within every David Picasso, everything. The Scream, famous Scream by Edouard Munch. Nearly right. 74 million. But yeah, 74, no, 100. But it could be by Sky. Last night with 108 million dollars. dollars. Millions of dollars. Yeah, millions but here dollars. in England. Okay. Um, <laughs> I reported that the, uh, the news was a million dollars. Yeah. Yes. Yes, but it's pounds. Okay, it's pounds. <laughs> yes, well, it's pounds. Fine. Right. <laughs> but the news right was the that new world. it's been sold in dollars. It, you're quite right. Yes. Yes. You're absolutely right, and I've translated it so that everybody understands what we're on about. Yeah, but we know. Because they wouldn't have a clue about dollars. No. <laughs> I mean, there's only four around, and this one's in pastel. It's not the actual picture. I want to be there where someone says, actually, there are four of them, and he goes... Oh. <laughs> what else could you buy for 74 million quid, I was wondering? Metropolitan Police. <laughs> <laughs> Four million. You could just keep that in your bank and just go to the ATM, yeah. press display balance. The day you may withdraw yeah. three hundred quid. I'd yeah. like to see that. <laughs> well, you have to do something with money. Money is not just to keep it in a bank. It was just a wee joke there, Nancy. It was just <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet up after. We'll discuss some isers and long-term savings bonds. <laughs> This is the £74 million pound sale, pound sale, of the Scream. <laughs> or, as Norwegians call it, Mr Happy. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Uh, Ian and Nancy, your four are... Jeremy Hunt, Victor Sylvester, Nancy Delorio wow. and Sarah the Walrus. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is to do with dancing. Mm -hmm. Because the one fact that's come out <laughs> in favour of the Culture Secretary is that he does Very the Lambada. You've danced yes. on Strictly. Mm -hmm. Sarah the Walrus yep. obviously it, has learnt to dance. So it's to do with a specific type of dancing. 
Tango. Victor Silvestre yeah. thought the tango was <laughs> sinful and would never play yeah. and the orchestra would never play it. Well, you, you, you say, no. but who's the odd one out? We do need to Victor try... Sylvester. No. The no. walrus. Nancy. No. Jeremy. Jeremy's <laughs> 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 Diving in in a slightly cheaty way, I thought. <laughs> yeah. You are right, it is, yeah. Jeremy. They've all received compliments for their tango, except Jeremy Hunt, who was complimented by the Education <laughs> Secretary on his lambada. Uh -huh. Did you know he's got a sprung dance floor in his house? Mm. That's great. Did you know that? Yeah, I read about it, yeah. No, I reckon his body's it's underneath. And he modelled the people to the tune of I Am the Walrus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What did Gove say about Jeremy Twinkletoes then on Radio 4? Fantastic dancer. He mm. said, you know, wonderfuls. He sort of he can float I'm across funny. the surface. Pretty much. He said uh, to the listeners, if you ever want anyone to liven up your party by cutting the rug with dash and distinction, <laughs> then Jeremy is the man to invite. Do we mm. think he's helped? Pause <laughs> <laughs> <Once, laughs> here, because it seems to me saying I know you've got all this trouble, obviously, over the B Sky B deal. But at least you're a good dancer. It's like saying, you know, your penis isn't very long, but at least it's thin. <laughs> <laughs> Victor Sylvester was obviously the uh, modern godfather of the tango. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what Victor Sylvester outlawed? Was it the cha 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 he didn't like? It was actually something called the shimmy. The oh, shimmy. Yeah. It's a sort of belly dance, is what oh, it is, and he okay. didn't like it. Now, no. Nancy, is yes. it true that you received a compliment from Prince Harry about your dancing, or was that just PR bollocks? <laughs> part of true, part of no. Did Harry no, come that... across a nightclub yes. and say, I yes, really... But, well, didn't say exactly that, but he did, yes. He, he, he came up to you in a nightclub. Well, we happen to be in the same nightclub, yes. Yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> to people. No, not to people, that happened to me, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know that we were in Jamaica together, too. Oh, were you? Yeah. No, I didn't read that story. <laughs> He's getting jealous, isn't he? Look. <laughs> uh, now, Sarah uh, the Walrus, OK? She gets many a compliment when she dances on stage. Uh, let's see her in action. Play that guy have a dance for a lot worse. <laughs> They've all received compliments for their tango, except Jeremy Hunt, mm. who was complimented by the Education Secretary on his lambada. <laughs> After Nancy and Anton Dubeck were voted off Strictly Come Dancing, there were a few tears. As Anton said, you are a superstar. You are absolutely lovely. I have had the most lovely time. He then turned away from the mirror and gave Nancy a hug. <laughs> Right, Paul and Kevin, here's yours. <coughs> Stephen Hester, the M25, the UK-Mexican border, and Jimmy Savile. Uh, Steve, I don't know who Stephen Hester is. That would help, wouldn't it, if I knew? Um, he runs the Royal Bank of Scotland. He's oh, uh, does he? CEO, isn't he? That's the guy I speak to. I only deal with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Savile, he's pretty dead, isn't he? Yes, Stephen well. Hester's the only one that's actually physically alive. Because yeah. the uh, Mexican-American border is an inanimate object. The M25, although technically cars, uh, they aren't actually alive. Jimmy Savile is now um, uh, pushing up the daisy. So Stephen Hester's the only one still alive because he's breathing in oxygen, which is uh, reproducing in his blood, and he's keeping him going. You are, of course, absolutely right. Absolutely right, yeah. And yet wrong. OK. Um, it's about... Stephen Hester uh, opened up his house, didn't he, to the public? Is ah! That... This week. And now we shuffle closer toward the answer. I read yeah. it in your paper. I gave him a tour of his garden and they made a few hilarious what, jokes. The tipping about, Norton advertiser? About, about hedge funds. Well, that, that was covering pretty it. funny. He's right. mentioned the dreaded Chipping Norton word. What's the matter with Chipping Norton? Well, I thought you'd be embarrassed about. I've lived there for 20 years. It's superb. It has a fantastic Sainsbury's. <laughs> no, no, you're not. It's kind of, no, I'm going to have to say, because I okay. really don't think you're going to get there. Um, no. They're all the subject of popular tours, OK? Mm. Apart from Stephen Hester, whose house tour at the weekend wasn't very popular. 
RBS so-called fat cat uh, Hester invited members of the public to tour around his country house. According to the Mirror, <laughs> anti-capitalist protesters had promised to take advantage of the open days with some fun and games. But they were put off by the rain. <laughs> um, so if anyone had bothered to turn up, what do you think they'd have seen? He's got um, avenues of trees. That's quite boring. He's got a car that goes really fast. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is a good one. You'll like this, I think. Um, a £15 uh, coach trip around the iconic M25 offered by a Brighton bus company was so popular it sold out. But don't worry, because new dates are being added. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the tour entails? Yeah, going round once and then ended up where you started from. Yep, but come on. You right. get to put your head out the window and your tongue out like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> It's a coach tour. Can you do that in a coach? I'm not sure the window's open. I'm not familiar with buses, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> because not only is there a non-stop commentary which points out all the junctions and intersections along the route, <laughs> but a spokesman um, for the bus company told Sky News, we're keeping it as a surprise whether we'll travel <laughs> clockwise or anti-clockwise. <laughs> Right, the US-Mexican border, you can now take a make-believe trip illegally crossing the Rio Grande <laughs> from Mexico into the United States. Mm -hmm. According to the New York Times, you're escorted by a guide called uh, Poncho on a nighttime hike 700 miles away from the actual border on which tourists are chased in the dark, shot at by fake police, and have to slip under barbed wire fences in an attempt to cross the border. So while we're on the subject of outdoor activities, uh, where will people now be able to walk in the Isle of Man? Near your house. Not near it, right, right. through the kitchen, the bastards. <laughs> yeah, they're all the subject of popular tours, apart from Stephen Hester, whose house tour at the weekend failed to attract many visitors. Stephen Hester's garden has a swimming pool, two tennis courts and two horse paddocks. And, of course, there's a large ha-ha every time his paycheck arrives. <laughs> According to BBC News, the tour taking you on a full circuit of the M25 costs £15, which works out at a very reasonable 2p an hour. <laughs> You can now take a guided tour through the life of Jimmy Savile in his home city of Leeds. The tour leaflet includes photos of important locations in uh, Sir Jimmy Savile's life, comparing how they look today and how they looked in the past, with a sequence of captions that simply goes, Now then, now then, <laughs> now then. <laughs> Now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication of Caravan Times. <laughs> the editor has some interesting views which he can see but you can't as you're stuck behind him. <laughs> and we start with Richard Hammond's What was his most successful ever? Is it attempt to be born? <laughs> <laughs> Did he drive a caravan? Caravan drive? It's caravanning holiday to Cornwall. Oh. Uh, Richard Hammond likes camping so much, he's now bought a Volkswagen camper van and told Caravan Times, I shall spend the entire summer in it. That's only because he couldn't reach the door handle to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Drunk. Yeah. I blame what? The M25 tour. Yeah. <laughs> Is it alcohol? Mm. <laughs> no. Dessert. Well, Biscuits. you're nearer, actually, yes. but Wait, you need to come it? one course further back. Duck in stout. Steak and ale pie. Where's me duck in stout? He's there. Steak and ale just pie. close, but bang on. Steak and ale pie. Hey, well done. Oh. That's very good. <laughs> yeah. This is a drink driver who... <laughs> How many words did Sven actually get out when you were going out there? <laughs> This is a drink driver who blamed his drunkenness on a pie. The defendant said, I am truly sorry. It will affect me for the rest of my life. I once had a pie like that. <laughs> Next, Prince Charles prefers what to what? William to Hardy. <laughs> what it is, is wearing extra clothes to turning up the thermostat. <laughs> Next, a man walks into a bar what? A man walks into a bar and styles in a brand new joke. <laughs> a man walks into a bar mm. with a duck on his head 
It's a Hampshire man has helped fill up the newspapers by walking around with his pet duck, Boris, <laughs> bowing <laughs> Surrey's head. <laughs> He's just Boris. following David Cameron's advice. Everybody needs a Boris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Blair, I'm ready for what? Come Nazi. Back. Ooh. <laughs> What's he ready to for? Come back. He wants yes. to come back. Come back. Come yes. Back. This yes. is absolutely what? right. He is ready for a comeback. Come oh, no. Yeah, former Prime Minister Tony Blair is to turn his attention back to British politics. Blair is still working as a <laughs> Middle East peace envoy, which is a bit like Nancy being put in charge of the campaign for plain English. Um, <laughs> So, the final scores are, Ian and Nancy, you have seven, Paul and Kevin, you have nine! Oh, oh, no. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Nancy Delalio, Paul Merton and Kevin Bridges, and I leave you with news that, after it's revealed that anti-aircraft missiles are being installed in advance of the Olympics, people living near the dressage venue are assured that any military presence will be very low-key. <laughs> Police reveal a photograph of a man they'd like to question after Roy Hodgson has dog excrement posted through his letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> and after drowning his sorrows on election night, Ken Livingston wakes up in unfamiliar surroundings. Which, of course, gives us a problem because the results of the election will probably be known before tomorrow night's programme is aired, and so... And after his shock victory, London's new mayor wakes up in unfamiliar surroundings. <laughs> Good night. Sean Locke's talking female role models and Madonna's dance moves next on BBC One with Live at the Apollo. <laughs> Another artist. You two so just get a hotel room. Yes, it's just... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs>